What is item potence? And why does it help so much with programming in distributed systems? By the end of this episode, you will know how to implement item potence in your own system. Hi, my name is Eric Normand, and I help people thrive with functional programming. So item potence is important because it captures the essence of the safe retry. And without safe retries, you really cannot implement safe distributed protocols. Uh, so what is item potence? Um, the, the essence of it is that if you ask twice, it's the same as asking once. It has the same effect. The classic example is the elevator button. You go into a bank of elevators, you press the button, it lights up, it calls the elevator, and then someone else comes in and they go and they press the button too. The same button, it's already lit up. We know that that doesn't have an effect, right? But we still want to do it sort of for some reason, you know, it's kind of a just in case. But maybe they're right. Maybe the signal didn't get to the elevator and it's worth trying because it can't hurt anything. And that's the kind of thing that we want to instill in our distributed systems. Um, technically, it is an algebraic property. So when you're talking about pressing a button, this is an active effect you're having on the world. Um, whereas in algebra, it's a property of pure functions, mathematical functions. So it means something like if you capitalize the letters of a string twice, it doesn't matter. The first time is enough, right? So technically, if you apply f to a value, let's say f to x, it's the same as applying f to applying f to x. Okay, so you do the double application of f, it has the same effect as the single application. And you could just say that it means duplicates don't matter. I press the button twice, the second one doesn't matter. If I apply the same function twice, the second time does not matter. The first time matters, the second time, the third time, the fifth time, those do not matter. So why is this important? Um, in a distributed system, especially in a distributed system, we have this problem where messages over the network are unreliable. Basically, if you send a message, it might not get there. And you won't know. You cannot know if it got there. Sometimes you know if it didn't get there. You know, you get some kind of, you know, connection broken kind of message. But sometimes you just don't hear back. I, it timed out. Well, did it get there and the acknowledgement timed out? Or did it never get there? Uh, did the other system crash? Okay, but did it crash before it sent my email or after it sent my email? You don't know. It crashed. It's too, you know, it's too late. So um, email is actually a good example because you don't want to send the same email twice. So uh, let's say you have an email server and you send it a message saying, please send this email to my customer. And you don't hear back. You just don't hear an answer. What do you do? What happened? Do you send it again? What if that's what if it did already send the email? Is this going to send the same email a second time? But if I if it didn't send it and I don't send the message again, well then the customer won't get the email. This is really a real business problem. Um and so item potence would solve that. If I could send the same message again and it won't break anything, it won't have a second effect, just like that elevator button, I could send this message all day. I could send it a hundred times and the email would only get sent once. That's a good thing. Um, so what it lets you do is decouple, right? It's decoupling the 
number of effects that happen with the number of times that you request that effect, right? I can request it a hundred times, but it will only get sent once. And that is something that you really want to have. You want to be able to retry safely with limited information. I don't know if this went through, but I'm going to try again. And that is a very, you know, nice property to have in your system. Um, so how do you implement item potence? Uh, the simple way is if we look at this email server is you need some way of identifying the email. So some way of saying, this is the ID of the email that I want to send. And if I send you the same email with the same ID, so an email with the same ID again, don't send it a second time. So the server that's receiving it has to remember all of the IDs of the emails it has ever sent. Now that is for total complete item potence. But usually that's not practical. You can't remember every ID because it could be in the millions and uh, they could date back for many years. And it, you're, it's unlikely that you're gonna get uh, a request that takes years to arrive. Um, so uh, in a practical case, you might have a window that says, well, we keep three days of IDs. And that means that you can resend the same ID within those three days and we won't send it a second time, right? And so you have to find some kind of practical limit that balances the memory requirements uh, and the the kind of the kinds of like retries that you're doing in your system. Um, but notice it's very important to th this concept of identity is very important. If you don't have a, a concept of identity, what does it mean to send the same message again? Right? If I want to send two emails to this person, I need to be able to send two emails to them. So I need some way of saying that they're different. But if I want to retry, I want some way to say that this one is the same as that one, right? So you need some identity on your um, requests. If you're looking at an elevator button, there's probably an identity, you know, deep in the electronics of this ele uh, ele elevator service, um, it knows what button I pressed, right? It's third floor up, right? Or fourth floor down. There's some identifier for that button, which allows it to light up, first of all, uh, and stay lit until it needs to be turned off. Uh, but that identifier is probably used in multiple places. Like it puts in a request, oh, we need an up elevator on the third floor, right? Because we know that button and what it means. And it's also used to say, hey, I've already, I'm already sending that third floor elevator. Like I don't need to do that again. Right, so it's using that identifier. Um, well, let's let's uh, recap on this. So, oh wait, no, I did not say how. Okay, I I did halfway of how, halfway of how. The first half is you need an identity. Okay, the second one is once you have that identity, you use a data structure with an operation that is already item potent. So. A common item potent data structure with an, uh, with an item potent operation is a set. Okay, so just an, like an in memory set. If you have a set of numbers, where so you give each email like a, a unique number, and uh, as the email server sends off emails, it remembers the number in a set and just adds it to that set. So if it, if you add the set, you know, add it twice, you know, you've got item potence already, right? Um, same for an elevator. If you want to, uh, if you have a, uh, a button that has an ID, let's say it's like the string third floor up or third floor down or fourth floor up, fourth floor down, you save that into a set that says it's 
it's active. It's been requested. That means you can send it twice and it won't have any effect, right? To send it twice. Um, now, of course, this does not take into account the actual action, the effect that happens by pressing that button, which is to send an elevator to that floor. Same with the email. It doesn't take into account um, sending the email or not sending the email. So to determine whether you want to send it, it's pretty simple. Before you add the thing to the set, the ID, you ask the ID, the set, do you contain this ID? If it does, then you're done. If it doesn't, you send the email and then you put the ID in the set. Uh, there are other data structures that are item potent. Um, if you have hash maps, those are item potent. If you add the same key and value twice, then it's, it has uh, no extra effect, right? Um, Another thing that you could consider item potent is something like adding zero to a number, right? So if you need some kind of item potent addition, you can do that. Um, there are other data structures uh, that have item potents in them, um, but they're more complicated and uh, they're specialized usage. So um, you, I, I'm not going to go into them, but imagine they're like sets with other properties. You can add things in, but maybe they don't grow as fast as a set would grow. Uh, they're like more probabilistic, the kinds of, uh, data structures. Um, I mentioned strings being uppercased, right? That's something that's item potent as an operation. So you could use that if you need to, right? Like uppercase name means something different from uh, regular case name. Um, and that means that you could do it twice and it wouldn't have any extra effect. Um, you, you probably use this in something like, uh, like your email system might lowercase all email addresses before it compares them. But what if it's already lowercased? Well, that doesn't matter. So it's just going to lowercase everything. Um, and if it's already lowercased, there's no, no problem. All right, so let's recap. Item potence means duplicates don't matter. It's an algebraic property of certain functions, certain operations. But we extend it to actions in the world. So we extend it to effects that we can have um, uh, on the world where we're saying requesting that effect twice is the same as requesting it once. So those duplicates don't matter there also. Uh, we need it in distributed systems so that we can have safe retries. Um, it lets us decouple uh, what gets done from how many times we request that it's done. Um, you can easily implement it using item potent data structures and operations and it requires a sense a notion of identity in the messages okay so do yourselves a favor and look for some services that need to happen exactly once could be something like sending an email could be uh, writing a message to a log uh, could be some like user setting in your user panel and wrap them in something like a data structure that makes them item potent. Do me a favor, please, and uh, share this with friends. If you found it valuable, they might find it valuable too. Also, if you found it valuable, you probably want to subscribe because that way you'll get all of the other new episodes as they come out and you won't miss that value that you have already discovered. Uh, I like to be in deep discussions with smart people. So please email me. I'm uh, eric at lispcast.com or get in a discussion on Twitter. Um, I try to use Twitter as a discussion medium. Uh, so I'm at Eric Normand with a D there. And also, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm trying to get better at LinkedIn. It's a little hard for me. 
But if that's where you like to connect, let's connect and start having a conversation. All right. See you later.